So what is this ID here? We can also see it in our database. And if you remember back the MongoDB part of this refresher, we also had this ID. Well, the ID gets added to the document each time we store a new document in the database. This is a unique ID for each document. So with the ID, we can identify a specific document and it gets added automatically, no matter if we use the MongoDB driver or Mongoose. The thing about this ID is that, well, you can see it here actually, it has a special type. It's not a string, it is a so-called object ID, so a MongoDB specific data type, you could say. And typically you might want to work with these IDs, for example, as part of if checks or things like that. And with JavaScript, you cannot work with this object ID data types. For that, you need to convert these IDs into a string. And Mongoose, again, has a convenient way to do so. I can show you this back in the project. Here in the mongoose.js file, here to create product. And now here we can console log the type of our created product. But interestingly, we can now access the ID already. I'll come back to that in a few seconds, but we can access the ID in two different ways. And our goal is to convert the object, this object ID into a string. And again, Mongoose got a nice little helper for that. For that, we use a so-called virtual getter, which is added by Mongoose, and we can refer to it with ID here. If we do so, save it, and now again, create the banana, go back, you see, now we turn it into a string. So with this virtual getter, this is working. By the way, if you would refer to the ID property, so with the underscore, so as you can see here, we have the underscore in front of ID. If you would do this and create the product, you see, we get back an object. So here, this conversion doesn't work. So again, Mongoose got us covered. And with that, we can convert the object here into a string. So this virtual getter helps us to convert the object into a string, but why can we actually access our ID property here? Because neither in our model nor up here in our JavaScript object, we have the ID property. Let me comment out this console log quickly and let's now log our created product up here. So before we actually save it to the database, saving this and creating a new product, we can see that now, although we didn't store the document to the database, this happens afterwards here with our save method, the ID is added already to our object. And that's really interesting, right? Although we didn't define it in our model nor here in our object, we get this ID property here in our object and in our document in the end. And that's also the reason why once we store the document, this ID is added. And this is in the end a default feature provided by MongoDB. Now let me delete that console lock here though and let me comment this back in. And as we talked about this ID now, I think it makes sense to have a bit of a closer look here before we conclude that module. 